Uh, it's time for another math. Easy solution. Turn to discuss uh, further into trigonometric substitution for integrals. And now look at example one of an example series that I'll cover in later videos. Uh, basically, I will solve this example, which states find the integral of um, square root 9 minus x squared all divided by x squared dx. So now, this one is pretty complex and it doesn't look uh, too straightforward of how to solve this. And uh, yeah, we can't apply this regular substitution. Well, I, I can't see how we can. But this is in the form of the uh, earlier trig substitution that I went over in the introduction in my last video. So this is in the form of, well, because there's a square root 9 minus x squared, uh, we, could re we could try to apply or re try to rewrite this so that we could apply this trig identity, 1 minus sine squared theta equals cos squared theta. So if we could rewrite this in ter terms of something like this, then we'll remove this minus, and then we can also, the square root will be gone. So the idea is to get rid of the square root. So, and uh, from my earlier video, in, in this case, we would apply this substitution, or this trig substitution, x equals 3 sine theta. And the reason we use 3, because there's a 9 there, so 3 squared is 9, we'll eventually square this. And now this is 4, and we put where theta is less than or equal to pi over 2, and greater than or equal to negative pi over 2. And the reason for this is because this is, trig substitution is part of the, uh, is, is, is considered considered an inverse or a reverse substitution, and, uh, and we will eventually have to solve the inverse of sine theta in this example, so we have to set uh, this, um, yeah, we have to set theta and basically, or define the region that theta is defined in. So in this case, from negative uh, pi over 2 to pi over 2, this is just a general case for sine. And the reason for that, if you were to draw the x, y curve, sine, sine looks something like, like this. So then at, at this is where it is uh, usually defined in because it later it's going to go down. And then this won't be one to one across it. So this is pi over two, and this is negative pi over two. So we consider this because when you inverse it, it needs to be a one to one function. So make sure to watch the one to one function videos in my earlier video in the video links below. So now if we define it like this, and in this region, so now what we get here is if we were to plug this inside, so we get basically uh, plug this inside. So square root 9 minus x squared. This equals 2. And now if we just plug uh, this inside, so this becomes 9 minus 3 squared is 9. Now there's a sine squared theta. Now this equals 2. Is take the 9's out or factor it out. 9, there's a 1 minus sine squared theta there. And now this we could just apply this trig identity. So this becomes, this equals to now, this is 9 cos squared theta. Now we could square root everything out of there, or, or square root this inside. So we get 3. And now this is an absolute value of theta, and the reason is is because, yeah, because for real numbers, inside a square root can't be negative, and since cosine theta can be negative, uh, once you square it out, we have to put the absolute value sign, so we can't. But regardless, this equals to just 3 cos theta without the absolute value sign. Because in this region right here, if you were to draw the region out for cos theta, it looks something like this. And this is where, this is pi over 2, this is negative pi over 2. And as you can see, this whole region here is greater than zero. So if it's greater than zero, we can just remove the absolute value because it won't be less than zero. Yeah, so thus we have simplified this uh, square root and got rid of it actually. So now what we could do is plug everything into the integral and also we'll solve the other differential because we know x equals to three sine theta, then the dx or the differential or derivative is equal to three cos theta d theta. That's just the derivative of sine is cos. So now we could plug this all in. So we get a uh, 9 minus right here. 
9 minus x squared all divided by x squared dx. This equals 2 integral of, so this part right here is 3 cos theta. That's this whole uh, square root is gone. That's just 3 cos theta. And then x squared, that's just sine squared theta. And now the dx becomes this. So this times by 3 cos. Actually, no, I just forgot right here. This is a 3 in here. So there's a 9. Because we plug this x inside of I forgot the 9. So basically, that's just 3 squared and sine squared. And now there's a theta d theta right here. And now we can begin simplifying. 3 times 3 is 9. Divided by 9, that just cancels out. And there's a cos squared. Those add those uh, times together. So we get cos squared theta over sine squared theta d theta. And now this becomes just, this is a cotangent. This is uh, just defined as cotangent, and then there's d theta. Now the integral of cotangent, um, we could solve this, I'll solve it quickly, because we know that the derivative, like I showed in my earlier video, basically d over d theta of cotangent uh, theta, this equals 2, and you can see the video link below for the proof is, is negative cosecant squared theta. So we know that. We also know we also know that basically the trig entity sine squared plus cos squared theta equals one. So we know this, but if we write this in terms of cotangent, so divide everything by sine squared theta, sine squared theta sine squared theta. So we divide everything by it. We get 1 plus, this becomes cotangent squared theta equals 2 cosecant squared theta. So rewrite this in terms of cosecant squared. Let's move this negative 1 over to here. So I just moved it over here. So that's what this equals to right here. And we could throw this inside there and now we know the integral or the antiderivative of cosecant squared theta would be basically this right here which is cotangent uh, theta but there's a negative so you flip the negative there so throw this back all inside so we get basically integral of cotangent squared theta d theta equals two integral of now cosecant squared theta minus one d theta. Now, so now we get this part and now we can just solve this integral here because we know that uh, the derivative of cotangent theta is equal to negative cosecant squared theta and the integral this is just an antiderivative. Yeah, that's, that's all the integral is. So this integral is just saying what is this value. So this cosecant squared theta the integral of that is going to be negative cotangent uh, theta. Yeah, because the antiderivative of this is so basically is going backwards. It's cotangent theta. And there's a negative 1. That becomes negative theta. The integral of a constant is just put a theta out there. Now we have to add a constant plus c. So now we get this part. Yeah, now we've solved this, but this is then the new variable and now since this is an indefinite integral, since there's no, uh, we're not finding the exact value from, let's say, from one point to another, uh, we must return to the original variable x. And this can be done by using trigonometric identities to express cotangent theta in terms of sine theta, which equals x over 3, or simply by drawing a diagram where theta is considered as the angle of a right angle, and the latter is usually used this part right here, drawing diagram, and because it's easier, and we will try that right here. So we know that right here, x equals two, three sine theta, or rewritten here, x over three is equal to sine theta, and by definition, sine theta of a right angle triangle is equal to opposite over adjacent. So if we were to draw this out. And, and where the angle is theta. So if we draw a triangle like this, this is a right angle, this is theta. So basically the opposite is going to be x in this case. It, and then, actually no, this is not adjacent, this is hypotenuse. 
So yeah, that's uh, your hypotenuse not adjacent my bad over there. But anyway, so put this here. So we have an x over three right there. And now using in this part right here, this Pythagorean theorem. So this would just be in this case. This is going to be three squared minus x squared or equals to basically nine. So this is just uh, yeah, using Pythagorean theorem right there. So now we have this part right here. So now we could write cotangent theta. Because we know cotangent theta, that just equals to uh, cosine over sine theta. And cosine is adjacent of our hypotenuse. This is opposite of our hypotenuse. Hypotenuse cancel. So we get adjacent over uh, opposite. So adjacent is this close one right here. This, so then this would equal to 9 minus x squared over x. So now we've solved this part. Yeah, so we basically solved this part right here. Yeah, now I just want to make a quick note that although in this diagram theta is greater than 0, this expression right here that we found uh, for cotangent theta, this one right here, is valid even if theta is less than zero because if it's less than zero this x would also would just be negative so everything would work out fine right here so now so we know that we know this we also know because we have to solve for this theta and that's where the inverse function comes into play this would be uh, basically we know x equals to or x over three is equal to uh, sine theta now we apply the inverse, so theta is equal to is sine inverse sine right here of x over 3. So now that we have everything, we can just throw everything inside. So the integral 9 minus x squared over x squared dx is equal to, and that's just this negative cotangent theta, which equals right here, negative square root 9 minus x squared divided by x and now we have minus this right here inverse sine of x over 3 and now plus a constant uh, yeah plus a constant c and that is our final answer anyways hopefully you learn from this pretty extensive example on trick substitution hopefully you follow it along and I'll go over some more examples to have better illustrate this concept. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned. And like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching. And stay tuned for another math easy solution.